In this screencast I want to show you the PowerShell configurator which is for server core and uh, Hyper-V server. And you can see here that I'm running Hyper-V server in a virtual machine and I've provided a virtual floppy disk that's got the configurator files on so I can just go insert disk and choose that disk. So I'm going to log in here and when I log in you'll see that the standard menu that's part of Hyper-V server comes up and this is written in VB and the first thing I need to do is to go to a command prompt. From here I can have a look at the files that are on the virtual floppy disk and you can see there's an install.cmd and there's a registry file that you might want to review if you don't just trust uh, random registry files from the internet and then there's the configurator itself. Now if I run the install this actually takes a few seconds so we've speeded it up for the video uh, it installs PowerShell and its dependencies so that uh, you don't have to do that manually. Then it copies the files on, warns you that it's going to modify the registry, makes the registry changes, and having done the registry changes, it starts PowerShell and the configurator for the first time. Now the configurator is actually a set of PowerShell commands to use at the command line, but I've written a front-end menu for it and you can see that menu here and one of the options is to change the shell that Windows uses and the startup programs that it runs so you can see it's telling me what the shell is at the moment and giving me the option to say well leave it be or change it to PowerShell or change it to PowerShell with this menu or vanilla CMD well I'm gonna go for PowerShell and I think I'll take this menu as well so I'll put in M because it's a registry change, uh, the menu wants me to confirm that I really did mean that. So yes, I do mean to do that. And now it tells me that there's one program run at logon, which is sconfig. And do I want to keep it or remove it? Well, I want to remove it. And again, that's a registry change. So yes, I need to confirm that. So having made those two changes, that will be the, the last time we see sconfig. I can log off and log back on again and if I log off and on again what we'll see here is that uh, Hyper-V server logs me in and brings up PowerShell as my default shell and it loads the menu. From the menu I can do things like configure my firewall rules. So if I uh, go to the firewall you can see that right now this machine uh, doesn't recognize the network it's on, it thinks it's on a public network uh, and you can see what the status of the firewall is for that. If I look at the rules and go to enabling rules that will show me rules that are currently disabled. I'm going to look at the inbound ones and disabled and a candidate to be enabled is the remote desktop rule. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and enable remote desktop so I'm going to choose enable and I'm going to choose allow connections from everybody and this will set all the settings including the firewall rule to allow me to make remote connections. Now the reason that this machine thought it was on a public network uh, is if you look up here uh, it's never been given an IP address and there's no DHCP server on the network it's connected to. So I'm going to set the IP address. Um, I wrote this because I hate going through Netsha to do it uh, from the command line that way and we speeded this up so you haven't got to watch all the settings being set but there we go it's set here's the information about the configuration on that adapter and you notice the old IP address is still there and there's a warning that says this takes a few seconds to update well while I've been talking that's updated the old IP address has gone so now I've got an IP address and I've enabled remote desktop, the thing to do would be to come out to my host machine and say I want to connect to that machine using remote desktop. And there we go, I've just picked up the same session. And now I can do things like turn off the paging file. Um, and uh, the other thing I want to do here is make sure I can manage this machine with Windows Remote Management. So if I enable WinRM, I can then manage Hyper-V on this server with the uh, Hyper-V GUI tools running on the machine of my choice. Among the other menu options, we've added 
the ability to get to a couple of graphical configuration tools. So you can see iSCSI settings and you can also see uh, language settings and we've got time settings as well. All those just bring up the GUI bits that are still there in Core and Hyper-V Server. Now I did say that the configurator was a set of command line utilities and you can see I've added get IP config to the normal PowerShell and you can see if I run it with a minus question mark switch it provides help in the normal PowerShell style. Um, so it even gives links to helpful places that you can go to on MSDN and so on. And if I go and use the full switch with get help, you can see examples of how to use uh, set remote desktop, uh, what the parameters are actually used for, uh, and so on, beyond the, the basic description of what the command does. I'm just going to kick off another instance of PowerShell here uh, to show you a little bit about how you can explore. And we can see what's actually in the um, configurator. So right now I've got no modules loaded and if I run get IP config it gives me an error. And if I ask PowerShell what modules are available it tells me that the configurator is available. So I'm going to import that module and you can see it changes the prompt. And if I use the command get command and ask it for the commands in the configurator module it gives me a list of everything that's available there including menu which is an alias for the show menu command which, surprise, surprise, takes me back into the menu. Back in the menu, uh, one of the other major things I want to do when I'm configuring my server is to control which Windows features are installed. So you can see here are the features that are installed. Hyper-V is on there by default. Installing the configurator added PowerShell. But we don't need the uh, East Asian fonts and we don't need the 32-bit uh, support. So I'm going to take out uh, the, the fonts and uh, Windows 32 and Windows 64. So I'm going to remove both of those. And what I do want to do instead is add a couple of features. Again, you can just see we speeded up uh, the uh, video there a little bit. So you don't have to watch the, uh, the progress bar all the way. And this time I'm going to enable features, so I go through the same process, but this time it gives me a list of the features that aren't installed. So I'm going to install the best practices commandlets and the server manager commandlets. And the server manager commandlets actually make it easier to uh, do these tasks from within PowerShell, um, these adding and removing of components. Now, one final task I want to do uh, before I uh, leave this particular machine is to change the machine name and I've kept this one for last because this one does require a reboot after it's done. If I switch to another server you'll see on this one that uh, the configurator isn't just for core or Hyper-V server installations um, but in the uh, full installation a lot of the functions that are provided in the configurator are in different parts of the um, server manager utility. Now, I can set uh, firewall rules from a command prompt, so if I need to do that uh, quickly, I can do that from there. But one option that a colleague said uh, he'd like to see added to the menu, and I put in, is the ability to turn off the event tracker. Now, I find the event tracker is great for data centers, not quite, so, quite what I want for a demo system. So, uh, I've just added it to the menu. I get a question saying, do I want to enable or disable it? I'm going to choose disable. And you can see up here now on the menu display, it tells me the menu is not displayed. So I can go and shut my machine down and not get the uh, event tracker message.